Did you know that Lego factories never stop working? And that the ink goes through a complicated and long production process before it goes into the rod? If this is news to you, you should watch this episode and fill a gap in knowledge because today I'll show you production processes that will give you goosebumps. It will be interesting. Let's go. Lego It is hard to find someone who has not played with Legos or at least doesn't know about these toys. These Danish toys have revolutionized the field of entertainment and have forced millions of children to develop fine motor skills and creative thinking. The production of Legos is a very interesting topic. The Lego group began producing plastic bricks in 1949. Since then, all Legos have been made to fit together so that old bricks can fit into modern sets. Such precision is the result of careful controls and calibrated production steps. In factories around the world, Legos are made using the same technology. The basis for all parts is pellets of plastic. They are brought from the factories on trucks and stored in warehouses. The very pellets of plastic have white or black color, but sometimes they are even colorless. From the warehouse, pellets go to the molding shop. Here the machines process Lego minifigures nonstop. Different colors are added to the pellets here as well. The factories have more than 50 varieties of colors. Here, raw materials are heated to a temperature of 230 to 310 degrees Celsius. Once heated, the pellets turn into a mixture that resembles toothpaste in its consistency. The mixture falls into the punching machine, where under the influence of high pressure produce Legos. It is worth noting that Lego factories actively use recycling materials. Waste which remains after the production of Legos immediately recycled and put back into production which, as I said, never stops. But what about precision? How do Legos fit together so perfectly? The fact is that the shapes that the manufactured parts have is determined by interchangeable templates. It is due to them that Legos are so precisely sized. Templates play almost the main role in all factories which produce Legos, so they are very carefully monitored and cared for. When Legos are already made, they go into boxes. Filled boxes are sent to the conveyor belt and then to the next warehouse. Everything here is automated so that the computer can find the right box and take the details out of it so that they can get into the right package. When the package is filled and sealed, it is time to send it to the store. ATM I think many of you have used an ATM just this week or even today. The thing is very useful, but have you ever wondered how ATMs are actually made? They don't just appear out of nowhere, do they? Let's break it down. Since all ATMs have a similar design, they are produced according to approximately the same principle. Each machine consists of two sections. The lower section is a steel safe which contains money. The upper section is equipped with all the gadgets needed to perform operations. There is a card reader, a panel with buttons and a monitor. Most of the non-electric parts used in ATMs are produced in factories from sheet steel. Workers put the steel sheet on a cutter that is controlled by a computer program. A laser is used to cut the parts out of the steel into the desired shape. The finished metal parts are dipped into a tank with a liquid that will later protect them from corrosion. Then the parts are dried in a special oven and painted. All these parts will eventually become the frame of the upper section of the ATM. After assembling the frame, workers manually assemble all the electronic parts and modules, connect them with each other and fasten them. The outer panel in the top section, which is equipped with a keyboard, cameras and other stuff, is also assembled by hand. When the upper section is assembled, it is lowered onto the safe, which is made in advance. The sections are fastened together, after which the finished ATM is tested and adjusted for the necessary operations. After all the tests, it is ready to go to the bank, mall, store or other building where it will be used by customers. Ink It may not seem that ink is the most important product in the world, but that is not entirely true. After all, ink is used everywhere, not just in pens or printers. Any patterns, drawing, text on paper or cardboard that we see around us are made with ink. So how is it made? The many variations of colors used by designers and typographers are based on four main colors – yellow, magenta, cyan and black. Interestingly, black is the most important color in this set because it is responsible for the brightness of the other colors. Two ingredients are used to create the colors. The first is the pigment, which contains the color. It looks like a colored powder. 
The second ingredient is the binder, which is a thick and sticky varnish. The production process begins with the pigment and thick varnish being placed into a large tank where they are mixed with an industrial mixer. The tank is equipped with a heating system because in a warm state the mixture becomes more liquid and therefore it is better mixed. The next stage of production is grinding. The pigment particles were still recently grains of colored powder, so they are still lumped together inside the mixture. The paint will only have a uniform color if it is possible to break up those lumps. Two kinds of equipment are prepared for this process. The first one uses metal balls to break up the lumps. The second equipment makes the paint smooth and shiny. I am talking about a machine with rollers. After these steps, the ink is ready. Then it undergoes a complicated and multi-stage quality control, after which the ink production is considered to be finished. Ink is actively used in the food industry because there are labels with inscriptions on any products. Such labels are on coffee cans, ketchup bottles and milk cartons. Speaking of milk, stay tuned to find out how milk is produced on an industrial scale and what workers do to the cows. You will also see a sheep's wool processing and find out how glass bottles are made. Let's move on. Milk. If you go into any store, you will find plenty of milk on the counters. You can argue for a long time about whether the milk in the stores is good or not, but one thing is certain, in all likelihood, it was given by a real cow. But how do cows have time to give so much milk? It turns out the dairy industry has one little secret. Cows are not milked by hand, they are milked with a special milking machine. First, the cows are driven into special prepared rooms where such machines are already in place. Workers put feeders with food in front of the cows so it will be easier for them to stand the process of milking, which is not the most pleasant and comfortable since it is done artificially. While the cows are busy eating, milking machines are attached to their udders. The machine starts alternately pulsating and stimulates milk production. The milk is collected in special containers and the cows are sent to rest. The product is pasteurized, processed, undergoes full quality control, poured into containers and sent to stores. For the cows to give milk for a long time, they need to be cared for, watched and inspected regularly. In addition, to prevent various diseases, including infectious diseases, cows need to have their hooves trimmed. In this way, they will live longer and be healthier and thus will give better milk. The hoof trimming process is a standard and simple procedure. The cow is placed on a special machine that lifts it up and holds it in place. At this time, a trained person clamps the hooves and uses a special machine to clean and trim hooves. It is not the most pleasant process for the cow, but it is better than getting an infection. Sheep's Wool Processing Have you ever wondered how does sheep wool become clothes? How does sheep wool become mittens, vests, belts and sweaters? This process is very interesting. It is worth saying that sheep do not suffer. Wool clipping is a painless process so you can wear clothes made of sheep's wool with peace of mind. The production process itself begins with the masters taking sheep to a special room where the animals are sheared. Professional workers deal with one sheep in just a few minutes. After this time, the sheep is already running around naked and there is a pile of wool on the floor. The next step is the selection of wool. This stage is very important. It is necessary to select only the best wool because the quality of the final product depends on it. The wool is sorted by grade. The workers separate the dirty and low-quality pieces of wool from the good pieces. After the selection, the wool is baled, bagged and sent to the factory. There, the material is processed and washed in special machines. After that, the wool is dried and sanitized and then is beaten to make the yarn softer. Later, they will be obtained from the wool. The last step is spinning of the yarn of the loom. The yarns are formed into huge bobbins. They are then used to make clothes, fabrics and cloth. Glass bottles. As always, it all starts with the raw stuff. Sand, soda ash, limestone dust and other ingredients like dyes and glass master are mixed and then sent to the furnace. To turn the mass from a powder into a thick liquid, it must be heated to a temperature of about 1,500 degrees Celsius. Next, special scissors cut the red-hot glass to produce small, identical-sized fabricated parts. After that, droplets of glass mass are sent to the molding machines. These are special capsules with a metal rod. Inside them, the liquid glass flows out through the hollows and gets the shape of a bottle. And although the products at this stage look ready, they have to go through several more stages after processing. 
In the final stages, the bottles are heated again, this time to 500 degrees Celsius. This process removes residual stress from the glass, which would cause the bottles to burst or crack. At the last stage of production, the bottles are sprayed with a solution that makes the glass less susceptible to scratches and scuffs. Then come the quality control and various inspections. After this, the bottles are sent either to stores or to other factories where they can be used as containers for particular products. That's all guys. Which production process surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you later.